welcome back to Let's Play Kato Shoujo. A note to future me when editing, if I haven't freaking done that by the time I get to editing. Freaking change the bird's water! Remember, future me, remember. Now let's get on with the uh, recording. One piece of paper. Well, I've got one piece of paper here, and I'm going to go over it actually then. This is random, like, uh. Yeah, Thursday. Like, started a course in Japanese at the college. Because honestly, I didn't really expect they actually had a course for it, but it's not like a course for a class or anything. It's an online course, and. First one was easy, right? First bit is like, yeah, I got this, you know, like, hi, and, uh, yeah, and all that, you know, yes, no. And Ohio, Ohio Goslamas, Konnichiwa, hello, good afternoon, Konbanwa, good evening, yes, yes, and then there are like a few other ones that kind of throw you off, and one that threw me off was that house and no sound similar. That's confusing. But then it went on to foods, and I found that confusing as well, because I had, that, that was like completely no knowledge whatsoever there. But then like, the third one that I went over was colors. I've got to go over that since I've just one sheet of paper. I mean, I like verify. I just like was literally verifying this. Is like, is this all correct? Like all of this is it the correct pronunciation? Google, it's just like yes. Google Translate on our land was like ah, just like black is kuro. I'm not sure if that's pronounced correctly. And. Uh, Google Translate translated as fuel, so I imagine it's one of those things where it's the same pronunciation, kind of like for different words. So the English language is not alone in that, where it's just like, oh, you've got your, and then you've got your, you've got there, and you've got there, and then you've got there. <laughs> it's just like, ah, son of a bitch. Words where they have multiple meanings potentially, and then there's red, aka, when searching for that, of course, it's just like, aka. Uh, green Midori. That one was kind of odd in Google Translate. It's just like Midori, English Midori. What? Uh, light blue. Uh, that this is a weird thing. Like blue is ow or something like that. Ow or something like that. But for some reason, this one has like light blue and dark blue. Like light blue is Missouri. Is it? Yeah, my pronunciation did work on that. Missouri, Missouri, real thing. And dark blue is con. I can't remember the pronunciation. And then there's like uh, yellow is Kiro, orange is Dai Dai Ro, brown is Chiro, purple is Murasaki, grey is Hiro, and white is Shiro. And then suddenly, out of all that, pink. Pinku. <laughs> just like, you got all these new words, and then when it comes to pink, you just kind of like, it's like a bit of an accent going on, isn't it? It's like, Pinku. So yeah, and like, they have like this test at the end of it all, where you got like, this, like, got a list of the colors up, and you've got to click on the right one right after they pronounce it. It's like, oh shit, we gotta memorize, gotta memorize. But anyways, enough of that, let's uh, get on with the plot. The emotions for me to take my seats, my legs feeling like sticks as they carry me there. This is going to be a long day. Oh, I know that feeling. Anytime I go to the gym, the treadmill immediately makes me feel like my legs have become sticks. And like, uh, that's another thing I did, uh, it was yesterday actually. Actually did some gardening, sort of, you know, weeding and all that. Freaking exhausting, and me being a complete idiot. Freaking did it with my cord on on a freaking warm ass day. Freaking hell, it was boiling, man. He's like, ah. Oh, yeah, arrow, pointer, mouse cursor, whatever. As soon as the lunch bell rings, I'm on my way to Hanako's desk to ask her what's going on. Uh, Hanako, did you tell? Did you tell what? I've. Oh, oh yeah, I remember. They had the party with the alcohol and stuff. She looks up at me and shakes her head. That's a big relief. It's just... Just... Well, hello there, Heechan. It's nice to see you again today. 
I grimace and turn towards the unmistakable voice coming from behind me, that face. You know, anytime I see Misha's face, I've said this before, but it has such a pinchable look to it. It's like, pinch, 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 it's like a freaking strawberry or something. I know. It's just... <laughs> I don't know, man. That was way too upbeat a tone of voice to feel comfortable, even from Misha. Misha's happy smile is nothing out of the usual. Shizune's, though, is a very bad sign. The one she wears has become notched into my brain as her I have got you seven ways from Sunday smile. Ah, uh, hi, Shizune, Misha. You, uh, uh, you look happy to see me. <laughs> Question. Not feeling well yesterday, Hee-chan! No, no, I wasn't. I'm feeling better now, at least. That's good to know, Hee-chan! Why do I get the feeling that Shizune is leading me into a trap? You sound like you're not being completely serious. Oh no, Hee-chan, we're generally pleased that you're all better now. Shizune is positively overflowing with happiness. There's only one reason why she would be like this. Oh no. <laughs> In fact, we were quite worried about you, after all. You, Hanako, and Lily were all absent from class on the same day. Yep, she's got us. So thoroughly that all I can do is sigh in defeat. I guess you have your own theories about this. Could you just kinda... not tell anyone? It's a bit late for that, Hee-chan. I suppose she's right, considering the looks I got as I entered class. Still, things only seem to be at the level of vague suspicion rather than outright accusations. So we'll probably be fine. Hanukkah's face sinks a little further. Such attention is troublesome enough for me, let alone hurt for her. Going by Shizune and Misha's reactions, I think they notice this as well. The only reason we're giving you such a hard time is that you ignored us yesterday morning. Yesterday morning? It takes a while to recollect what happened then, given the haze induced by the generally awful state I was in at the time. Oh right, the uh, mocking. That was you too. Ah yeah, I remember now. It was, and you left us there for ages after we'd taken all the effort of coming to your dormitory early in the morning. Sorry I was having a problem with nausea. A problem with nausea. They're not buying it. I can't blame them. Shizune's head drops in resignation before she reaches into her pockets. Something white and yellow can be seen sticking out a little, and as she pulls it out, it turns out to be an envelope with very bright decorations on it. Oh, it's that again. Since she points it towards me, I duly take it. This is what we were trying to hand to you, uh, well, so hard, hard to give you, Hee-chan. You don't check your... I turn at the sound of Misha's voice as my eyes register what's written on the envelope. Iwanako. I stare at the envelope for a moment before suddenly remembering that there are people around me. There's a very strange, somewhat invasive feeling about their expressions. I kind of want to be alone right now. Iwanako? Uh, it's nothing. Uh, thank you for bringing me this, you do. I should think so, after what we went through to get it to you. I step back and say my goodbyes. Misha theoretically pouts even as I go out the door. But Shizune and Hanako remain very visibly curious about my reaction. I hope they won't interrogate me on this later. They probably will. The smell of the gardens is, as always, a very pleasant sensation. Except when dogs take a shit on it. Some of the most visible signs of how well funded this school is, aside from its sheer size, are the expanse and conditions of the grounds. Can you imagine, man, if... I mean, it's not just dogs, our animals are gonna crap somewhere. I don't know. A good number of students can be seen eating lunch, chatting and playing on the bright green lawns. Even some of the staff is enjoying the summer here, keeping watch over the students and idly walking along the long concrete paths. I've never seen a sight like this in my home city. Oh, in excursions, maybe, but certainly never in the school or anywhere near where I lived. Even the bench I sit on to read is warmer thanks to the summertime sun. Remind me of why I haven't worn the school blazer even once yet. You know what? I thought it was a calendar for a second there. <laughs> yeah, I look to it, doesn't it? Except it's not. 
Is this really how letters look in Japanese here? It's just, uh... And you can't even, I mean, what the fuck, man? It's like, oh yeah, decide to go with this font here. It's like, how the freaking hell is he supposed to read that? Considering this, the sunflowers and splashes of vibrant yellow coloring yeah. adorned in the paper are quite appropriate for the time. If only the words written on it were as well. Here I was thinking I'd manage to uh, get over her when that when troublesome thing shows up. Her handwriting looks vaguely familiar at best, and only now that I see it again, I remember what she used to write in pink pen a lot. She was always very girly, for lack of a better term. But she was also quite fragile. I never knew if I liked this aspect of her or not. Though, with the arrival of this letter, that question seems to have become largely moot. The letter begins with not much more than an update on the state of things going on in her life. My old class has a good start to the school year. Many are anxious about the exams that will be coming up in the future, etc. But it ends on a very personal, if brief, note. It feels a bit like she wrote most of the letter just to try and soften the blow from the ending. I wanted to somehow express my feelings, but the right word didn't come to me. I couldn't say anything to comfort you. I'm really sorry for not being able to support you when it mattered the most, even though I like so much. At least now, finally, I can be more honest. If I could go back to those quiet days in February and March, I'd tell you not to give up on yourself. That's what I would say. Maybe you wouldn't have drifted so far if I had just said something. I hope you've managed to get back on your feet on your own. Now that the distance between us is also physical, it also feels more final, somehow. I wonder if we will meet again. Perhaps it's for the best if we don't. Still, if you would like to correspond with me, by all means write me back. I'd very much like to hear about your new school and how you're doing. I wish you all the best. Sincerely, Iwanako. And so, that's that. Our relationship is over. Nice, neat and tidy with no ambi- <laughs> I hadn't held on to any illusions that it could ever begin anew. The last time she visited me, none of us said a thing, except for the one word she said as she left for the last time. Goodbye. By that as, be, be that as it may, this feels more final. The capstone on a, an experiment that both us tried and failed us. A loud shout draws my eyes away from the letter. It's just some students horsing around, with one of the teachers standing nearby coming over to talk to them. Are you okay? Wait, what? <laughs> That's the thing, man. No voice acting. Are you okay? I can't tell who it is, what gender, or anything, man. I mean, sure, I've played for this rap before, but it was so long ago I can't remember these things, you know? A gently vo attentive voice comes from my side. For a moment I assume it to be Hanako, but it's actually Yuko. I mean, for example, the previous part with the party, like, when Lily's sister showed up, I knew it was gonna be her, because I remembered. So I decided, you know what, can't just be like suddenly a male voice comes in Twitter or anything. Oh, hello, Yuko. I thought you'd be in the library. She gives a cheerful smile, one quite fitting the atmosphere, and flourishes the empty wrapper of a roll in her hand. She must have someone also covering for her while she grabs something to eat. It reminds me that I haven't had anything to eat yet. I don't feel hungry, though. Let's give one lunch won't hurt. Uh, mind if I sit here? Sure, go ahead. I quickly slide the letter back into its envelope, slipping it inside my bag propped against the side of the bench as Yuko takes a seat. She drops a wrapper into a bin beside us. Without much else to do, I lean back and take what enjoyment I can from the sun, soundly reflecting on the letter. The lush lawns, the clear blue skies, everything looks so different from the way it did back then. It's the school surroundings, from the hill, it's on to the woods around it, are completely opposite to the urban scenery I remember. Maybe this is where it's like to feel homesick. Then again, it's not an outright bad sensation. The feel of the area around Yamaku, while very different, is also nice. I think I could get used to it. Uh, hey, Sao! Uh, yeah? You didn't answer my question from before. I wasn't going to say anything, but you still look troubled. 
Uh, if you know what to say, anything, uh, uh, anything though, that's okay. I don't mind at all. I'm uh, uh, so, sorry for asking for something so strange like that. Uh, I don't mind. It's just uh, I got a letter from someone I knew before I came to you, Maku. It's uh, it's the bird chirping. That's that's what the letter is. It says chirp, 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 chirp. Sincerely, chirp bird. It made me think about some things. I thought I'd managed to get over most of the problems that my accident caused. But now I'm not really so sure. Gotta wish I had never seen this. I don't think that's good, Asao. When my boyfriend left me, he did so very suddenly and never let me know why. At first I was very depressed about it, but I decided to forgive him. You forgave him? Couldn't he at least uh, talk properly with you about it? You know, kind of spoilerish. Going back to Kenji's ending, I guess, but whatever. It seems to imply that they probably were dating, so maybe that's who she's referring to in this case. I don't know. I mean, it's kind of like, it's not really confirmed or anything, is it? He was always one of those people that found it difficult to come close to others. This again, sounds like Kenji. In the end, I decided that I fell in love with him for uh, a reason. He was a good person, and I think that if I had been in his position, I'd probably found it just as hard to try and talk to him. I don't really see the connection to the letter I got. I mean, uh, um, uh, how should I put it? It must be very hard for that person to send that letter, and if they did, I think they must have fought very hard about exactly what to say. Do an archer manage to write this letter and bring a final close to our relationship? Something that I'd never managed to do. Whereas here I am, trying to protect and help Hanako as best as I can. Especially with Lily leaving for a while. I'm not be even able to deal with my own problems. Does that make sense? She's taken my non-response and furrowed brow is doubt. She really reads faces too much. Just like a certain other person. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. The letter was just kind of a shock, really. I... Uh, you just said, like, someone else... Is he talking about Kenji? Because he tends to, like, always come up close. He's like, hey, let me get a closer look. If he is referring to Kenji, then it makes even more sense. Just like, see? They were once a couple! Unless he's talking about someone else that I'm just completely forgetting. Uh, the letter was just kind of a shock, really. I think I tried to fool myself into thinking about my life reset when I came into Yamaku. But now I'm suddenly aware that it didn't. I'm at a bit of a loss about how to deal with these feelings. I think that's something I can't really help you with. Uh, with, uh, sorry. It's fine, I think, being able to talk with you helped me to get things sorted out a bit better in my head. So, thank you anyway. She nods and smiles sweetly. Yuko is a nice girl, so it's a shame she's so highly strung so often. The school bell ringing out startles us both. Ah, I was supposed to be back before the bell! Whoops. She jumps off the bench and almost races off without a second word, but turns on her heel as she remembers she was talking to me just now. I'll see you later, Sal. Cheer up, okay? I'll try to. Thanks, Yuko. Are you going to try to outrun Emmy's speed or what? With a quick bow, Yuko takes her leave and begins her rush to the library. Her flight catches the curious eyes of a few passing students who are enthusiastically trudging back to their classes after their fun. Reluctantly standing from the bench, I dust myself off and join them. Even while I walk through the gardens back to the main building, the thought of the letter in my bag doesn't stray far from my mind. And that was the whole day. <laughs> ah, the feeling of walking through the streets is one of very deep nostalgia. While Yamaka may be like the reverse of what I've lived in the past, where I've lived in the past, the city at night is amazingly familiar. It's completely alien to me. My eyes are well. Well, the few times I've been in... Well, no. I say the amount of times I've been in cities mostly would be in the daytime, but I have been out of city in the night, but that's not like to just like, oh, let's go look around the city. That's more of, okay, we're going to see a gig of some sort, music, comedy, whatever. Like I've seen Liam live, uh, was it last year? Uh, it was his last uh, tour, he was. And I did have to go to a city to actually see him, went to Cardiff, so there was that. 
but I'm just like I'm still very unfamiliar with cities because I never go to cities. But anyways, uh, it's constantly uh, moving constantly from the bright electronic screens, glowing high in the night sky, to the street lamps piercing the darkness with their light, to the businessmen enjoying themselves at the web, and the busily uh, talking couples on dates. Even if I didn't want to, I can't help soaking in every aspect of the city. I savor its familiarity like a sweet candy sitting on my tongue. Willie is walking to my left as her cane swaying to and fro, holding onto her sister's arm for guidance while talking. Compared to traveling by taxi or bus, being driven by Acura in her while well, nice car was a much more enjoyable experience. Maybe not for the person on my right though. While Lily was used to her sister's driving style, and I quite liked a bit of excitement, Hanako was holding very tightly to the door for most of the trip. Everyone looks so pretty at night. Everything. Oh, something. Hanako quickly looks down yet again as she accidentally catches someone's gaze. Yeah, it does. My answer isn't very thoughtful since I'm distracted by so many thoughts that I find it hard to keep up on small talk. One of the, those distractions, aside from the city sites, is how Hanako looks. This is the first time I've seen her in something other than her school uniform or her pajamas. Gives me pause when I first saw her outfit when we met up at the school gate. Considering how much her head is lower, lowered when people walk near us, I imagine that the hat she wears is more than a fashion statement. Naturally. While well, Nishri was wary of Lily's plan to take us out into the city, when night fell, it became obvious she had water rights. Not many people have paid Hanukkah much head, uh, heat, since the darkness hides her scarring well. So, in the city, any ideas on what to do? Akra beams a smile, something tells me that she's the one who is making this particular decision, even if her sister may have proposed the outing in the first place. You'll see, just follow us. I nod and try my best to stifle a goose and. Bird! 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 After what happened during Hanako's birthday party, I don't trust Akira's judgment all that much. We keep walking and I notice that we are passing more and more cafes, restaurants, and other eateries. You know, I wonder, it's just like. It's obviously just like an actual picture, but like. Do a bit of an effect to kind of make it look a little less, I don't know, realistic. I don't know, it doesn't make sense. But honestly, this kind of reminds me of Google Street View in a way. That'd be weird, just like, you can't use Google Street View images for a visual novel, man! Every once in a while, a drunken man in a suit comes out of a bar, usually being supported by another. But for the most part, the customers around this part of the city look young and fashionable. Different kinds of music come and go as we pass by each business. The score created by the, over uh, by the overlap should be grating, but it reminds me so strongly of the times I spent in the city with my old friends that I don't mind. I hear faint music, what is it called? Red Velvet! On a coin, I have started to drift a little apart from Lillian Acra. That comes to a stop when I hear a soft thud from beside me. Uh, sorry! By the time she writes herself from her apologetic bow, the middle-aged businessman she bumped into is walking away after mumbling a half-hearted apology. Hanako looks a little put off by the experience, and as she quickly skips ahead to match my pace, I notice her head hanging low once more. She probably bumped into him because she was looking downwards and not where she was going. I step to the side a little and put one hand on her, her far shoulder, drawing her closer. Sal? It's okay, you can walk close to me if you want. Hanako hesitates but eventually nods in a second. After a couple of times when I thought we had arrived at Akira's destination, we reach our target. By now we're below the elevated walkways and past the most garish and brightly lit places. A bit surprised, the average age of those around us is distinctly older, and the smell of cigarette smoke is pretty good. The area is far from seedy though, and it's a little amusing to see Lily's reaction to the smell of smoke. While it's masked by the low token of those around us, jazz music can be heard emanating from inside. Looking up at the dimly lit sign, it becomes obvious why. A jazz club? I have to admit, this isn't what I expected. 
Lee gives an amused snort and a smile. Somehow I feel like I should have known it, Akira. As we talk outside, I notice more and more odd sideway glances directed our way. People locally catch themselves staring and look away, but that just makes it more obvious. I'd noticed this occasionally when we were walking, but it's more pronounced now. I've never experienced anything like that in my life. An average looking Japanese teenage guy, just a little taller than normal, isn't the type to draw attention without making an effort. Hey, come on, just because you're teenagers doesn't mean you can't have a taste, right? Well, I don't really mind music, if that's what you mean. No, some jazz music. I don't really listen to jazz, but some has that kind of chill kind of feel to it. And then there's those chaotic stuff, which is like, well, of course, it's gonna have variety in jazz, man. All, all I know about jazz is that it's... I remember seeing a comment somewhere on the internet that summed up jazz saying something along the lines of jazz is taking everything you know about music theory, everything you possibly know, and then just like thinking, fuck that shit, and make up their own rules. I don't know if that's true or not, but jazz is pretty chaotic, so it probably is. I, I don't mind it either. She's only just managing to force the words out. The contrast heavily to when we're alone in the Maku, and it disappoints me a little that she's so highly strung for what's supposed to be a good time out on the town. So to read Hanako's face as she keeps looking downwards, it's a little wonder if she doesn't often come out in the city because of this. It makes me a little thankful that my own scarring is easily hidden. Well, he has a similar way of attracting people's gazes, but the reason for it is clearly different. She hardly looks like a native, and the same can be said for her sister. That much is far more noticeable than her blindness from a distance. She may not be able to see this for herself, but I have little doubt she can hear the odd whispered praise from people who think they're out of earshot. But be that as it may, she doesn't seem to show any sign of idle annoyance or pleasure at the attention. Akira's still as confident as ever, though, flashing a smile, she strides in with Lily by her side, the two of us falling behind. Oh, fight! No! Damn it, you, you noisy people! So crowded! I'd expected my eyes to keep adjusting the light inside, but it's not much brighter than outside. Music review, it is clearer now, mixed in with the sound of glasses moving on the tables and counter. What type of jazz would this be anyway? Because, as I've said in the past, I'm crap at recognizing genres, and the fact that genres have subgenres makes it all the more confusing. And the husky chatter of the patrons or whatever, looking to my right, reveals a music source. A jazz group playing beyond some tables. Patrons seem to be mostly men, and though there's a handful of women, nobody looks under 30, aside from us, of course. Feels a little like we've stepped into the 1920s, and the atmosphere is quite agreeable. I'm not completely comfortable simply, wait, I'm not completely comfortable simply because of my age, but were I older, I would probably feel quite at home. And of course, seems a bit more relaxed now, probably due to nobody looking at her. Everybody's talking between themselves, or drinking, or watching the band. Akira casually takes a seat at the counter without even glancing around. She's probably come here before. Lily retracts her cane, filling out the bar, stool, and the edge of the counter before taking a seat beside her sister. The bartender takes a brief break from polishing a glass to watch her before putting it down and coming over. Well, screw you, Mr. Barman, because I'm gonna jam. I don't think I. Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I've ever, well, I probably have tried jamming along to a freaking jazz track, but I don't know. I hear that jazz music's a bit like, uh, uh, well, I remember like with my guitar tutor, I remember bringing up ninth chords. Apparently they use a lot in jazz and I tend to like those type of chords, but I don't know what key this is in. See, ninth chords. It's kind of faint now. The chitter chatter of the people is too loud. Ask her. Good evening, ladies. What'll it be? Just a scotch, thanks. Really? May I have a glass of ch uh, black suited elbow hits her side sharply. Orange juice, please. No problem. Coming right up. Nah.
Yes, I have no idea what key is it. But hey, that's jazz, isn't it? Screw the rules, I have jazz. That's an odd cut. I don't know. Blues and blues and jazz. Entirely sure, but I think F major. That's that, that must. Well, I didn't even know how much it picks up. I haven't got my amp in my room, so. But I think I like played part of it there, along with a bunch of improv. Like, oh, just combine jazz with blues, and then like kind of like shred a bit, and then like get a bit melodic. I don't know. The bottom starts to pull the Couple seconds pass before Actress suddenly remembers that Hanukkah and I are indeed here, and turns around. Us. You do want anything, or are you just gonna stand there? Hanukkah seems to be getting a bit restless. No matter where we're going to sit, eat ourselves, there's going to be people right next to her. I don't think she looks convincingly older than 20, unlike Lily. Looking around, there's a game section to our right. A couple of billard tables can be seen in the corner, and nobody's using them either. I glance to Hanukkah about to ask her if she'd like to play, but she's already looking longingly in the same direction. Maybe it says something that we can get by with so few words nowadays. We'll go play pool there. Akira leans back to see past me before shrugging and sitting back up. It seems they all have to put up with only me for company. How unfortunate. Have fun, you two. We turn and set off for the abandoned corner with Hanako take the lead. The prospect of a nice quiet game away from everyone makes her walk noticeably faster. Her eyes stay firmly fixed on her prize. 